I recently uploaded a video that was a journal made out of a padded envelope from an Amazon delivery. And I have a number of these envelopes lying here in it. That video was pretty popular, and I thought, why not do that once again and maybe create more than one journal out of one padded envelope? So that's what this video is about. My name is Peg. And I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe. And of course, the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So let's get started making this envelope. I'm going to tear the labels off of the, the Amazon envelope. I'm going to hold on to that little tag, maybe use it later. And let's decide a width. So this is about the width that I would like. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this envelope to that width. And that is going to be the width of two of the booklets. So I'm just going to cut that in half. And now I have two journal covers ready to decorate. This third is a little um, out of shape or out of square, if you will. And I've decided to leave it that way because I think we can have a background color and a fold over there. So we're going to leave that as is and get started with preparing these covers to decorate. And I'm just using the glitter glue to make sure that that is glued together to give us a good firm substrate. And I'm trimming off I'm using my friskers cutter to trim off the, is it fiskers or friskers? I'm not sure, but either way, you see what I'm using, and I'm going to trim off the excess. I think it's fiskers. I don't think there's that extra R in the name of that product. We'll, we'll look later. So we have that together and you can see where the background might show on this journal number one. Journal number two will be just a symmetrical little booklet as will journal number three. So we're going to make three journals out of this one padded envelope. So let's decorate the first. And I've chosen a nice blue out of my Arteza paints and I'm laying down some texture with a piece of drywall cloth covering it with cold gray. I'm going to do that until I have about five to seven pieces of deli sheet. And that's what I'm printing this on is the deli sheet. I've chosen deli sheet because it's very pliable and it uh, moves with the envelope. And now I'm preparing the cover and I'm using a cardstock, not a cover for the booklet, but a cover for my signature. So I want my signature to be in these two colors as well. So I have placed a piece of cardstock and utilized the two colors and added a stencil to just give that signature cover a bit more interest. So I'm first color with the drywall cloth, second color laying the stencil down on top of the second color and pulling the print. And there you have side two of the signature cover. We have the deli sheets. We'll just tear those into small pieces after we prepare the envelope to glue them. And I'm just using a darker blue to give that shadow effect when I glue the deli sheets down because some of the areas of the deli sheets will reveal what's underneath. So we're tearing these into pieces and I'm kind of sorting them by pieces that have a straight side and pieces that don't. So I have something that I can butt up to the edge and know that I have a straight side. So now we have everything down. We'll pull out the homemade Mod Podge or the glue and water mixture and coat that with a brush. And I'm just going to collage these deli sheets onto the outside 
of this envelope. And you can kind of see there where that darker blue does show through in a couple of areas, very faintly, very lightly. But that's why I, I covered that with a acrylic paint, with an acrylic paint. We'll get this all covered and allow it to dry. Okay, now that it's dry to the touch, I'm going to flip that over. And I want to just glue this edge. I decided to cover that edge and then we'll glue them together. And that gives us a nice clean edge on the outside of the booklet. So I'm gluing that in, folding it over and gluing it in. <clears throat> so we've overlapped. And we'll just kind of tuck that in like we were wrapping a gift. And we're going to do the same thing on the back side. We're going to glue all of our pieces down and then flip them over to the front. And that way we have a nice finished edge on all sides of this journal. So let's get that done. We'll speed up the drawing a little bit with the heat gun. Be careful with the heat gun, that bubble wrap will melt. And now we'll glue the pieces onto the back. And you can see I'm overlapping on that one edge where I am going to fold it over to finish off the outside perimeter. And we'll allow that to dry and do the same process. So that is dry. I can flip it over now and not have it stick to my work paper. And we'll just cover the outside edge of this as well. And there was a little spot there that I wanted to make sure that I covered. So I'm just looking it over and making sure that everything is pleasing to my eye. And there were just a couple of little pieces where the manila might have been showing through that I want to make sure we get covered. So now we'll let that dry. And I have left that top open. And I've left it open because I want to add some lace to the inside before I glue this all together. So that was the purpose for folding over and getting those edges nice and and finished. And now we'll take some Fabri-Tac and glue this strip of lace across the top. So that is going to peek out out of the top of the booklet. And now for the bottom, we're going to create some spots where we're going to install some grommets and I'm choosing black grommets and I'm just using the crocodile to punch the smaller of the two holes. I think it's a sixteenth of an inch and we'll get those aligned across the bottom. I'm choosing six holes so I measured them to spread them out evenly across the bottom of the booklet. And now we'll set that journal in there and switch that crocodile setting to the grommet set setting setting. Setting setting, does that make sense? And we'll just apply some pressure and put those in place. And 
and we'll have little dangles that we'll create to go on the bottom of that. So let's get the stencil applied, and I've chosen a, a boho type stencil, a mandala or mandala a stencil, mandala, not sure proper pronunciation, but you see the pick. And you know what I'm doing here. And I just wanted it to come off the page. And I think I'm going to leave that standalone image. And now let's create the dangle. And I have some craft wire here in black and I'm just choosing a, a small strip of that putting it on my rounded pliers and just taking a turn with that to create that top hoop we'll pull that off and you see the the little hoop there we'll insert a dangle over the little eyelet if you will that we created and then we'll hold that in place with the pair of pliers and just twist the wire for the closure. Trim off that excess piece. We'll add a bead. And then we're going to make another one of those turns at the top so we'll grab those rounded pliers once again and just twist and turn that wire around to create the closure trim off that outside edge and then I'm going to grab these little, I'm not sure what they're called, the little dangle enclosures, and we'll attach those. They're the little bowl pins, is what they're called. And we'll attach the little charm that we just made onto that bowl pin, thread that bowl pin through the eyelet, and there. You have a nice little dangle and we'll do that six times. So all of those are in place. Let's make sure that we have the dimensions to cut our signature cover. So I've just measured the width of the book, unfolded, and the height. And we're going to create a signature cover that will fit down nicely inside our little booklet. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller so we don't have that overhang. And there. And now I'm going to pull in some tea stain paper and just create the signature. And I'm just trimming that up to the right height and width. And I think I used four pieces of paper, which wound up to be about eight sheets front and back inside the signature. And I'm just flipping through this with some of my little boho stamps, black, keeping it simple. And now we'll bind that signature into the book. I'm just poking a hole with my craft pick through the center. I want to make sure that I have the exact center of that book before I poke that hole.
and there we go. So we are through the signature, through the journal, or through the cover, and now we'll just pull the thread a little over three times the width of the book, put that on our needle, and we will come through that first hole. And we're going to leave enough thread. So we have a dangle, and I'm using a waxed thread, poking that second hole now. And we'll come through the back, through that second hole. And we're going to go back th again through the middle, just making sure that we're good and tight here. So we'll flip that over, go back through the middle, and now we're going to punch that third hole with the craft pick. I want to make it about the same width as the first, and we'll come back through that, and then we'll tie this off in the center. And now we're back through and that promise tie-off comes now. I'm just tightening it up. Tie that into a square knot. And there we have the journal put together. Let's thread a couple of charms onto these pieces. I'm just choosing what I'm going to put on there, so I think I'm going to grab some more of those silver charms. And we'll just thread that on there and square knot it off. And I'm going to leave a little space or a little dangle of thread at the bottom of this because with wear and time that will begin to separate and it will fray out and look, look good in my opinion. So there's our first dangle. We'll get that tied up and we'll do the same thing. So here's our little booklet. Nothing out of the ordinary. And now we need to think about what we are going to do or what we're going to utilize as a closure. We have the lace at the top the charms at the bottom. So I don't want to use anything that's overwhelming. So I have some cheesecloth that I have not yet dyed. So it's a nice white cheesecloth. I'm just going to strip that off and tie that into a bow. And that will be the closure for this little journal. So I hope you like this. So I'm going to do it once again. Make sure that I have that cut in the proper length. And that completes this journal. And linked in the description will be the other two journals that we create out of this. I didn't want to create a video that was way too long. So you can choose the one that you like best and find exactly where that starts and kind of prevent you from having to endure too much of me. Once again, my name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Please subscribe to my channel and thank you to those that have. I enjoy your comments and try to respond to 
them all, or I do respond to them all. And once again, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for subscribing, and I shall say bye for now.